Yep, the show's called Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, but what it really is, it's just a trip to Flavortown. We're looking for real food by real people all across the country and now all around the world. So here we are in Minneapolis, Minnesota. To check out the one and the only that I've ever heard of, this is the herbivorous butcher. Sliced meats everywhere. I need some jerky. But of course, it's all plant-based. This is the only vegan butcher shop I've ever been to. But I feel like they're changing the world. But for siblings, Aubrey and Kale Walsh, it all started with very personal changes back in their teens. For me, I, it was for ethical reasons. Ethical reasons? Yeah, for me, it was for health. Health yeah. reasons. My nickname was Butterball. So they started making meat-free meats and cheese-free cheeses, first selling at local farmer's markets in 2014, and then less than two years later, at their own takeout joint. They want people who eat meat to say, this looks like what I'm used to eating, and I can still eat it and enjoy it. Turkey to Havarti. The turkey sandwich tastes amazing. So what are we going to make first? This will be the vegan turkey. We'll start with a vital wheat gluten. It's a 95% protein flour. This is nutritional yeast flakes, some onion powder. And these are recipes that you just developed? Yes. We've got sea salt, and uh, this is some time. It's some time. When is it going to get the turkey flavor? A lot of it comes from house-made chicken broth powder. We uh, take nutritional yeast, thyme, sage, turmeric, uh, salt, mix it with water, just like mom used to make. Instant flavor. We've got some olive oil so it doesn't turn out like a sponge. Soy sauce for a little bit more depth. We're going to pour the liquid in there. This is the turkey. We will wrap it in its cheesecloth home here. What do we do with that? This is, goes into boiling water for about an hour and a half. Cooks it all the way through. We bake it for another 10 minutes. Dries it out a little bit. Now we add some soy sauce and olive oil on top of it to give it a little texture. Yeah. Give it a little color to the outside. Yep. And then you go and slice it from there. Slice it ready. So this is your deli meat right here. That's the deli turkey. It's got texture. It's moist, and it's not rubber, and it's not a sponge. Yeah. I'm impressed. I'm tripping. All right, well, let's do the All cheese. Right, what then. are we making now? Dill Havarti. We start with a coconut oil base. Soy milk, lemon juice, and white wine vinegar helps to emulsify it. Put that in the blender. Next up, we got tapioca flour, kappa carrageenan. So it's a, oh, it's a seaweed. I was just. Helps solidify the cheese. Nutritional yeast flakes, sea salts. And that's the white miso. That's basically the flavor foundation. Pretty much. Yeah. Onto the stove. It's fresh dill. Heat it up. Heat it up. Thicken it up. It cools in the fridge overnight, and then it solidifies into a solid block. Wow. That's crazy. OK, make a sandwich? All right, yeah. Let's do it. We've got our garlic mayo. We've got Dijon mustard. we throw some turkey on there. All right, the dill Havarti, best part. Throw some lettuce on here, tomatoes, and the onion. All right, jump in. I'd eat it all day long. <laughs> Fresh veggies, a good amount of moisturizer with the vegan mayo. You were eating on a fantastic roll. Yeah. You definitely get the creaminess of the cheese. You get that chew, you get that texture, that meaty texture coming through from the turkey. Fantastic. We got a line out here. It's so good. The dill Havarti is off the hook. The turkey is flavored really well. The texture, the feel, everything about it is just like meat. How do you get different textures in different meats? It's uh, different ratios, and uh, we use different bean flours to create different textures. This is like groundbreaking stuff here, bud. Yeah, well, we're, we're trying. And wait till you see the texture he's mixing up for the three meats on this monster. Italian cold cut is amazing. Just packed with so many good things. This is one of my pride and joys. So you're saying the turkey was dynamite, but the pastrami is legit. It's, it's my favorite. Tomato juice, liquid smoke, got some water. Next up, soy sauce, plenty of olive oil. Pastrami is a nice, juicy meat. Tomato paste, lots of garlic, the white, white miso, miso paste, yep. Next, dry ingredients, vital wheat gluten, nutritional yeast flakes, red beet powder. Okay. Gives the nice color, a little sweetness. This is agar agar. Uh, another seaweed like carrageenan. Agar, agar? Agar, agar. Yeah. They just couldn't use one agar? No, it's so good they had to name it twice. Ground mustard. We've got basil and oregano. It's smoked paprika, sea salt, onion powder, and the fennel and peppercorns. Mix all this together. Wow. OK. Right in. Right in. Looks like ground beef. Crazy. Throw it on here. This will all go into the steamer? Yep. How long is it going to steam for? It steams for an hour. Bakes for the other half hour, then you let it cool, bring it out, and you slice from there. Yep. 
All right, got that same garlic mayo that we put on the turkey, a regular salt and pepper here. Oh, I'm so excited. So we got that pastrami, capicola, salty ham, and we got the pepperoni in there too. And this is our mozzarella cheese, lettuce. We got some onions. Red onion, cherry peppers, oil and vinegar. Let's see if I can get this one shut. You own this. You own this. No way. I'm picking up the notes of the smoke. I'm picking up the notes of the pepper. There's a good fat amount. You know, it's not dry. You're the Columbus of this, man. You guys yeah. are going to dig it. Trust me. If you really want to make the bomb tofu, this is the process. Yes. We have soybeans. And then I'm going to grind it through the grinder. Which so looks like it's a water fountain in elementary yeah. school. Turn on the water. Milk comes out on this bucket. Cook it in my dad's amazing steamer that he converted from a water boiler to a steam generator. We're steaming milk like we're a gigantic coffee shop. Skim off the foam. ET foam home. Now I'm going to develop it. We use vinegar and water. It's like making cheese. So we're going to go ahead and strain. Use some cheesecloth that I soaked in a little bit of vinegar and water. And I'm going to scoop in the curd. I curd what you're saying. <laughs> Fold this. Now we're going to press it. I'm so impressed. There we go. Gorgeous. I have like a big birthday cake. Cut it up and fry. We're going to add some oil. White onion. Tofu, house-made, Korean barbecue sauce. Just glaze that sauce on there a little bit. Now we're going to make the tofu noodle bowl. Rice noodle, lettuce, cucumber, pickled carrots and daikon. Gorgeous. Bean sprout, cilantro, mint from my mom's garden. Put on the plate, scallion oil, roasted peanuts, soy vinegar. I've been eating tofu since I was a kid. But this is tender, creamy, sweet, but light. That's the top best three tofus I've ever had in my life. And this dish, that is perfectly made, perfectly balanced, gorgeous. I would come back minimum once a week, if not twice a week, just to get that dish. Thank you. Oh, your tofu noodle. Oh my god, so so good. This tofu is amazing. The consistency on the inside is like a custard. And then it has a little bit of crisp on the outside. Combined with all these pickled cucumber and carrots and daikon, and then there's this sauce that is just the right amount of salty and sweet with a little bit of spicy to it. It really just knocks it out of the park. What are we making? We're gonna make a little marinara sauce for our spaghetti squash. Fire it up. Heat up the saucepan, up in a little olive oil, chopped onions and chopped garlic. Just want it to brown up a little bit. Okay. A little pepper, a little salt. And this was the recipe that your mom taught you. This is what we did every Sunday in our house. Had some fresh crusted Italian tomatoes. San Marzano? Yes, sir. So this has had a chance to simmer. Now what? Some really good Parmesan. Right in the sauce now. Right in the sauce now. And I'm going to add a little fresh basil. We had a little Chianti. That's really a little. And then I'm going to just simmer this and continue to stir. All right, so. Now let's cut the spaghetti squash. Fantastic. OK, now we're going to boil these. Not roast them. It's just a different flavor. OK. These will cook for 10 to 15 minutes. Now the spaghetti squash is done. So what are you going to do now? I'm going to spoon out the seeds, and I'm going to fork out the flesh. And we'll save the shells to stuff later. What are you into now? We're going to saute some veggies for the spaghetti squash. Give me the lowdown on the showdown. Okay, just heat up the pan, some olive oil, some chopped shallots, some chopped garlic, okay. some onions, chopped carrots, some chopped celery, red bell pepper. So you're going to sweat all the veggies. Sweat them down. So you want to have a little texture to them, but you don't want them to be all the way mushy. Yeah, certainly not. Yellow squash, zucchini squash. Uncooked broccoli and a little uncooked asparagus. And then some pepper and salt, a quick stir. Then I'm going to add some of the marinara salt, just for a little color, because it's going to get a little bit more later in the preparation. You're actually not a cook. You're just not another pretty face. <laughs> so that's that. I'm going to take the squash and just pop some of this in here and give it another stir. And then some salt and pepper. And then we're going to cool it real quick. One of these is in order? One of those is in order. That's got to be eight ounces. Too big for you? answer that. We're going to add a little fresh tarragon in there, a little more marinara, and now we give it a toss. And we're going to grab a little bit of the stuffing and pop it into the shell. Oh, it's a bounty right there. Huh? That's good lunch. And then we'll top with a little fresh mozzarella. In the oven for how long? About 20 minutes. You'll see that cheese start to bubble up a little bit. Dig it. Good. And ready to go. A little marinara on the plate. It's like a pterodactyl leg. Give it a little more sauce on the top. OK. Mm. I'll tell you something right now, bro. That marinara is right on point. Mm. Look at all the juice that's generated right down the bottom of that from those veggies. Mm. A little bit of sweetness, saltiness of the moths. Mm. 
The time, the detail, the energy, and the appreciation for food. Nice job. Any squash for you? It's delicious. That was tasty, huh? It's like eating spaghetti, even though it's a squash. I'm picking up a spaghetti squash. The marinara is fantastic. The vegetables are fresh and crunchy. Of course, melt the mozzarella, because you can't have anything without melt the mozzarella. The food is always delicious. I've got a lasagna here. It's nice to be able to walk to a place and they recognize you and they shake your hand. Got a little eggplant rollatini. I thought it was going to be good food. I just didn't know that it was going to be great food. Thanks. I mean, every time I come down here for diners, drive-ins, and dives, there's a new place I gotta check out, like this joint, Weights and Measures. Fancy your passant, up. Food with a little bit of interest. What's not to love? Stick a shrimp for a Jennifer. Everything is clearly homemade. It's kind of something for everybody. We were original investors in it. After five years, the chef that was one of the partners decided to retire. And I said, Catherine, we're gonna take over weights and measures. We said, this is your time. Whatever you produce, whatever you want. Roasted carrot pizza up. Roasted carrot pizza is my absolute favorite dish. It's unexpected in the best way possible. That's what we're gonna eat is a roasted carrot pizza? Yes, sir. All right, let's get into it, chef. Uh, dough first. I like doing flour, starter, dough. We use for natural yeast. So this was from yesterday? Yes, sir. Water, sugar, salt, a little bit more yeast. A little olive oil, got it. Let this go for about 15 minutes. Yes. And are we letting this proof overnight? Yes, we do. Knock it down, portion it, let it develop for 24 hours, yes. and then go. All right, this is weird. That looks like pepperoni. <laughs> a little salt and pepper, orange zest, honey. We just met each other. He's calling me honey already. Butter. Orange juice. This gets weirder as it goes. A little olive oil. In the oven. Give or take 20 minutes. OK, this I got to see. I'm going to see it. Now we're going to do the uh, duca. The what? Duca's uh, Moroccan spice. OK. Some almonds, some sesame seeds, cumin, some hazelnuts, black peppercorn, coriander, fennel. Are we going to cook this all in the wood-fired oven also? Yes. How long? 10 minutes. I love the way you roll. When those get done, what are we going to do? Grind up the spices to make the duca. We add the salt and pepper. Paprika. That's it. That's the garnish for the pizza. I need more duca in my life. This is one interesting pie. So we get the pizza dough, we get it stretched out. French soubise. Gruyere cheese, roasted carrots, a little fresno pepper for heat. Why not? Crazy pizza. We're going to put it in the oven and then cook it for about like nine minutes. Look at that. So I put it on a napkin to get the ashes out a little bit. I've never seen that. A little duca. I am lost. We have to talk. Outstanding. The tang of the Gruyere, the sweetness of the caramelized carrot, the spice of the Fresno. Without the duca, you sprinkle on like pixie dust. Wouldn't be a shame. It's giving me goosebumps. That is probably in the top three most unique pizzas I've ever had in my life. Like, the roasted carrot pizza coming out. The spices and the carrot combination are amazing. Nobody believes you. Carrot pizza? That does not sound good. I'm like, you have to try it. I tried it just because I wanted to prove it wrong. I was proved wrong. Well, you know what people have been asking for a lot lately? Vegetarian. And if you know anything about me, about my family, about my sister Morgan, we love vegetarian food. And this is Sweet Melissa. Bar's filling up. Get ready to be slammed. It doesn't really matter if you're vegetarian or not. Everyone is just very into sweet Melissa's. Buffalo cauliflower wings. Melissa is fabulous at changing cauliflower or mushroom or black bean into something that just is unique. And for over two decades, Melissa Murphy and her husband, Mark Zears, have turned surviving into thriving with their restaurant, bar, and food truck. We just thought, probably won't make it, but let's give it a try. You went from, <laughs> I hope we make it, to 22 years? Congratulations. Are you vegetarian? Yeah. Both of you? No. No. I respect the, the diet, and I eat it at, at home. Right. And here. Selling two lentil loaves for table six. The lentil loaf's amazing. If you didn't know, you would have thought it was meatloaf. Doused in ketchup, just like growing up. It comes with mashed potatoes and a mushroom gravy. It's delicious. What's the first dish we're going to make? A lentil version of a meatloaf. Do you understand that I get mental for the lentil? Excellent. The first thing we're going to do is mash some potatoes. We pre-cooked some Yukon Gold, some salt and pepper, almond milk, and melted vegan butter. What's our next step? The mushroom gravy that goes on top of the mashed potatoes. Olive oil, and then onions. Creme any mushrooms, black pepper, tamari. You can have it today, but it's also good tamari. <laughs> Water that we use when we boil the potatoes. Thickens it up. You also get the flavor. 
Ta-da. Cornstarch slurry. It'll tighten up. Let this cook for about 30 minutes. Next, we make the meatloaf. Yep. OK. Olive oil, onions, potatoes, minced celery, and carrots. A little garlic powder, black pepper, sea salt, pressed red chilies. Soaked lentils and our veggie stock. It takes about an hour or so for it to cook. OK. We're going to do the next step for our lentil loaf. The lentil mixture we just cooked, a little bit of Tabasco, poultry seasoning, tamari, crackers, cheddar cheese. And that is a fair amount of egg. That's how it works out for us. OK. It's going into a loaf pan. Ta-da. Yeah. And a little spray? Yeah. Just had to freshen up. Bake at 350, about an hour, 15 minutes. We're going to slam it out of here. OK. Slice a few slices, crisp it on both sides, steam it just a little bit. Okay. Mashed potatoes, mushroom gravy, top it with some of this tangy tomato sauce. And what's in that tomato sauce? Ketchup, brown sugar, Tabasco, and mustard. Stick this up in the salamander just to heat up that sauce. All right. This right here is like the most tender, moist meatloaf you could find. I mean, it's got great texture, it's got great chew. Love the little bit of crust that you put on it. The vegan mashed potatoes and this mushroom gravy. What I like is how creamy you're able to get them without the dairy. And the kicker to the whole thing is the ketchup, brown sugar, mustard, Tabasco sauce. Really delicious. Mashed potatoes and gravy going down for the lentil loaf. I'm a meat eater, and I don't feel like I'm missing that meat at all. On top of that, she has great mashed potatoes. It's just a die for. Arepa machilla, tres. Arepa machia, which is the vegetarian arepa. It's kind of like a pita pocket, but instead of being bread, it's corn. And all the vegetables in it, you get that good hearty, like, yes, I ate something delicious feeling from it. We are ready for a vegetarian arepa, built with white mushrooms. A lot of them. Garlic, salt, veggie oil. Roast that off. This is going to be an hour. Next, black beans. Some green onions, pepper, salt, garlic cloves, bay leaves, red pepper, and a bunch okay. of water. Cover them with plastic and foil, 350 for an hour. So time to make the arepa dough. White cornmeal. Nice and fine. Salt. And then we just add water. Ooh. It's going to take forever doing <laughs> it like this. It'd just be easier if I poured it. <laughs> right now, we need to go through the hand. Can you add some more, please? Mm -hmm. Don't want to add too much, though. He's ready. And we're going to go on the panini? And then we grill it both sides. All right. Just need some crust outside. What's next? Ogao. That's from Colombia. The ogao is ogao. the sauce. Tomatoes, green onions, pepper, salt, comino. More memories from home. Achote. And then some oil. Blend it up in the oven. All right, how long is this going to go? It's going to be an hour again. White cornmeal, fluffy inside, sweet plantains. A lot of plantains. Oh, yeah. The black beans we build, mushrooms. You going to fit all that in there? The red bell peppers on top. I'm not going to fit all that in my mouth. Top with the fresco cheese. Right there and some ogao on the side. It's heavy. That's a really good ribbon. Nice and tender, soft and pillowy on the inside. I love that you really roasted down the mushrooms. That's my favorite part. Good bite to the beans. The roasted red bell peppers are great. And the salsa. Ogao. I like the acid of that. You got sweet, you got tangy, you got rich. I mean, really good, buddy. Got one machilla ready? Amazing crunch on the outside and then soft and flavorful and smooth on the inside. Layers of flavor, literally. The sweetness of the plantains is a real surprise. The salsa that came with the arepa was delicious. Masa y papa for Alan. What torta are we into now? The masa y papa. Potato and masa? Yeah. Oh, so a vegetarian torta? Yes. Huh. We're going to start with some mashed potatoes. Some masarina? Salt, oil and water. OK. And we're just going to make a sort of rustic little dough. I feel like I'm getting a sope with potatoes in it. That's exactly what it's like. See that? That goes down real lightly. That was just about right. Put our chili in. Roasted down jalapeno. Just kind of get it tucked in there. Give it another smush. From here, we hand shape it. Could you make this more difficult? It's a salaried position. So I'll order this a day ahead of time. Exactly. Make sure that somebody can have this ready to go. We're going to par bake it. What temp? 350 for 20 minutes. Got it. And what are we making here? Roasted tamarind tomatoes. And those are going to go on the sandwich? Yes. Tuck our rosemary in. This is maybe the least traditional thing we do here. Some avocado leaf that we're Love putting that. in. Habanero. Garlic. Diluted tamarind paste. This is weird. Bit of oil, salt, and some pepper. 
roast this sausage. 375, about an hour and 20 minutes. What are we on to next? We're gonna make jalapeno mayo, charred chilies, garlic, salt, lime juice, some mayo. Let's see it. Okay, chef. So we're gonna put our jalapeno mayo on first. We can hide behind this thing. <laughs> so it's as big as your head. That's what we're going for. Good, well, you almost covered that. <laughs> okay. Once our huaraches are baked off, pan fry for about a minute. Both sides go in right on top. Wow. The tamarind tomato. I think I'm feeling lucky I'm gonna get three. There you go. Queso botanero. It's like queso fresco, and it's got a little chili and cilantro. Fresh onion with cilantro and lime. Slices of avocado, shredded cabbage, and pickled onion. And that's all she wrote. That might be one of the best vegetarian Mexican tortas I've ever had. Great crunch. It's creamy. It's spicy. It's tangy. It's rich. The acidity of the pickled onion is a must. The avocado flies right in. Then you get a little bit of fat coming through from that cheese. That's dynamite. Anyway, you slice it. Tempeh is traditional Indonesian food. It's really unusual to get fresh tempeh in America. It's almost like junk food, but it's not. <laughs> I've never made tempeh. OK, so I'm going to show you. If you're familiar with tofu, tempeh is the unprocessed. Unprocessed yeah. tofu. You okay. actually get the whole beans. We remove the hull. It's you and me. Yes. <laughs> we have to soak the soybeans overnight. Boil for about two hours. Skim off the foam. OK. Drain the water. I can start to see the hull coming yeah. off them. So the holes float. I knew there was going to be a method to the madness. <laughs> this has been made for thousands of years, and I'm just learning it. Now we're gonna boil them one more time. Just to soften it up a little bit more. Got it. These are the beans that have been dried. If it's wet, it will ferment. Fermenting is a real key here. It breaks down the proteins and gives it another layer of flavor. Did anybody trade lunch with you at school? No. When you rolled up with the tempeh fritter, people were like, I'm having bologna. We're gonna put our yeast in there, put it in the bag. Then you wanna poke some holes so that the yeast can breathe. <laughs> So now we leave it for about two days. Gonna funk up and then turn into a big old loaf inside of this. Yep. All right, so what are we making next? So the Indonesian name is achar. Spicy pickled veggies. Sugar. This is samal ula. Salt here. Water. Vinegar. Spoon. Cabbage. Cucumber. Red peppers. Carrots and canned pineapple. We like the juice. I got it. You let it sit for a few hours. Next thing? Tempeh. Now, is it always that warm? So when it ferments, it creates its, its own, own heat. heat. Oh, so I'm fermenting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to make the batter, flour, a little bit of turmeric, some garlic powder, salt, pepper, one egg. Got it. Water here. Scallions. Cut the tempeh. You see the beans here? And what did you call the white stuff inside? Mycelium. Your psyllium, mycelium, <laughs> their psyllium. Tempeh goes in. And then we're going to fry it. Dynamite. I'm telling you, the first time you ever tried tempeh, you should come here and try it. It's That's got delicious nutty. texture. It's a bit nutty. Mm -hmm. I love the batter with the green onions. You get that little herbaceous kick. A little pickled veggie, that little acid kick. Fantastic. Dosa coming up. Dosa is absolutely the way to go. It's a crepe filled with potato and onion. You have sambar on the side and coconut chutney. There's just so much flavor. What's the dish we're going to make? Masala dosa today. Masala is a stuffing that goes inside the dosa. Right? So now we are making a dosa batter. Sona masuri rice. In the water for a few hours. These are the black lentils. They don't look black. They wash it and then they break it so they're white. Fenugreek seeds. And you're going to puree that? Yeah, we have a special grinder for that. It's okay. called Vetstone Grinder, especially from India. The average person has this at home? Yep. What? Add water just to start the spinning process. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. How long is this going to run? 15 to 20 minutes. So we do the rice, then we mix the two together? And then we ferment it again for 12 hours. Next morning, we add salt. It has to sit in the fridge. A few hours, it'll be ready to hit the griddle. What are we working on now? The chutneys. But the coconut one is a special one. This is our desiccated coconut. So it's like dehydrated coconut almost. Exactly. Green chilies, super spicy. Cumin seeds, ginger garlic paste. Salt to taste. The roasted chana dal. It's like a lentil, which is roasted. Order. It's like a smoothie. We're going to do a tempering for that one. So that's a hot pan. Canola oil. I'll have this just by itself. Mustard seeds. This is urad dal. Dal is just another word for... Lentils. Red chili whole. Curry leaf. We just pour it in here. And now we're going to mix it together. We're going to make the curry that you're going to dip this dosa in. It's called sambar. The oil, the mustard seeds, green chilies, coriander, coriander. seeds. Crush it in your hand. Red chili. Give it a good stir. 
fur leaf, chopped onions, ginger garlic paste. We add all the spices in okay. here. Coriander powder, turmeric, red chili powder, Kashmiri. Once the spice is cooked, add water, tomatoes, yellow lentils. Cooked and ready to go. Salt, sugar, let it boil for 15 minutes. And that's it. So we're making the masala. Hot pan, canola oil, mustard seeds, mustard seeds, green chilies, red chilies. A lot of curry leaves in this place. Onions, ginger garlic paste, turmeric now. And this is our very special masher. Very special masher? Nobody has it here. They all borrow from us. Here in the whole food hall? Yeah. We put the potatoes now. Special masher is happening right now. Salt, cilantro. This one is ready to scoop out for the dosas. Our tomato chutney, coconut chutney we made, the sambar that we just made. For dosas, you gotta season the griddle first. Oil, spread it all over. Basically make it a non-stick. You just season it with a little bit of onion. I like that. This is the fermented batter. That's it. So a little bit more oil. The dosa masala that we made right here. And then we just fold it. The size of this thing. How do you attack it? Rip and dip. Rip and dip? There are very few things in this world that have that much flavor that much texture, that's outstanding. The coconut tangy, subtle, delicious. The sandbar is a little bit sweet. The tomato chutney is more like a salsa. And then you get the meatiness and the body from the potato. That's in the top five best Indian dishes I've ever had. So I'm here in Burlington, Vermont, to check out a joint where this guy's getting such acclaim. People are saying that he should be the driver of the vegan bus to Flavortown. This is Pingala. Runner, cruncher up, please. The Crunchwrap's this ooey gooey mess of awesomeness with the beans, the queso, and the rice inside this crunchy flour tortilla that's just toasted and grilled to perfection. What are we gonna make first? We're gonna do the Crunchwrap. We get our chili going, sunflower seed oil, some fresh garlic, mirepoix, serranos. So everything that we love about a good chili. Chili powder, cumin, smoked paprika, cinnamon, some salt, a little brown sugar. Sweat that all together. Okay. Now add the tomatoes, organic tomato paste, tamari, gives okay. a lot of depth. Lentils. I get mental with lentil. Yeah, sentimental lentil. Black beans. All right, so how long are we gonna let this cook down for? An hour, hour and a half. What's up next? Not avocado mash. So we're gonna make some herb oil. Fresh garlic, raw onion, rosemary. Great. Sage, tarragon, parsley, salt. I'm gonna get this going, emulsify with the oil. And it's ready to go in the processor with the chickpeas and the peas. Nutritional yeast, and then last secret ingredient here, a little lemon extract. Blend this down. Okay. Take our herb oil. Voila. Look at it from here and tell me it's not avocado. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. The texture is spot on. Can I get this with some chips and salsa? <laughs> yeah, man. That probably is in the top five greatest vegetarian vegan items I've ever had in my life. Oh. <laughs> Let's make some cashew cheese. I'm willing to learn. We'll start with some soaked cashews. Sweet potato puree. Nutritional, Nutritional yeast. yeast. You got it. Cayenne, oregano, garlic powder, some turmeric. Great color from that. A little salt, pepper, and lemon juice. And hot water. You want to let this roll for a little bit till it gets nice and smooth and creamy. It's outstanding. It's creamy, it's not over salty, it's not overpowering. Love the little bit of the lemon. And the great thing is that little spice in there. Yeah. What's left? Oat milk cheese. So boiling water. Adding our rolled oats in. How long is this gonna cook? Three to five minutes. We're gonna get right in there. Nutritional yeast again. Turmeric. Some garlic powder. A little salt, a lemon juice, a little oil, a little immersion blender action. Start adding in our tapioca flour. Tighten it up. Dude, I'm so impressed. Let's build this thing. I'm dying. All right. Tortilla, oat cheese. Brown rice. Just seasoned up a little special. Okay. Our chili, cashew cheese. A couple crunchy tortillas that we just toasted in the oven. Not avocado mash. Tomato, some scallion, cilantro, some pickled jalapeno. I'm not sure where this is going. It's going right in there. <laughs> we just fold it up, press this on a panini press. 30 seconds, 45 seconds. There's your crunch wrap. Bro. It's outstanding. The textures, the seasoning, the fake avocado. Yeah. Probably was the foundation of me getting my mind blown. I mean, out of vegetarian, vegan dishes I've had in my life, this is easily in the top five, if not top three. I would challenge anybody who doesn't think they like vegetarian, vegan, to come down here and try this. It's remarkable. Get on a plane and come to Vermont, remarkable. Crunch wrap, I need a runner. If you're a cheese lover, this is the one to go to. It's just comforting. It's really yummy. 